Hello and welcome back. My name is Tobias Friedrich and this is my channel about underwater photography. I'm back here on my couch today um, with uh, something new. Some of you already seen that on Facebook actually that I ordered a new Canon 5D Mark IV and I was actually looking very much forward to this um, camera but it seems or not it doesn't seem I will give it back to Canon but because I'm not fully um, satisfied for my personal needs, needs with that camera actually and um, in this video I want to explain you why I think it doesn't fit for my needs and it could also don't don't fit to your needs actually yeah so this is why I'm doing this video um, to have the full review or to have a little review about that camera um, I will go through some pros and contrasts for that camera and you then may can yourself think um, what uh, fits for you and what uh, what things what uh, features do you need best uh, uh, from this camera so you can just personally figure out if you need that camera or not um, I personally was very much looking forward for this camera and I expected a lot because I'm using a 5D Mark II until now and actually this camera is also recording this um, video now a 5D Mark II so uh, and an ISO 2000 as well so this could be maybe interesting for you as well yeah so I think that my Canon 5D Mark II actually have two um, bodies um, of that or three and um, and two um, CCAM underwater housings so I um, personally like them very very much because they are just so reliable and I just know what to do with them and what they can do and what they're not so um, also I had a thought about and finally made a decision that I will not sell my Canon 5D Mark II's and it will keep both um, underwater housings so uh, some of you already wrote, wrote me <laughs> until they saw the new 5D Mark IV uh, will you sell maybe one of your housings so I'm sorry I will not <laughs> because I so much like them that I will keep them and I um, still have reasons to, to keep my 5D Mark IIs actually. Yeah? But now to this camera. Um, what I think um, is very good on this camera is the, the low ISO um, speed. Yeah? So if you're really in dark conditions and uh, especially in northern Norway or so where I could have used that low ISO performance very much um, this is now top of the game. It's it's really good being being good results. Yeah, it's not you can't go up too much, and I wouldn't recommend it as well in the ISO speeds. I did some tests with um, ISO twelve thousand eight hundred, and that is still uh, or is already. I would say uh, I would go not over six thousand four hundred. I have to say, but this is still one full aperture more than you could get with the old five D Mark II. Yeah. So, but you can find out yourself on how high you want to go with a uh, with a five D. The like Lightroom has really good low uh, like uh, noise um, reduction tools already. Yeah? So you can you can work a lot with that. And um, the megapixels decreased, um, increased by by nine megapixels. So from twenty one megapixels, it gets now it gets thirty megapixels now, which I fi don't find is too important. But uh, it's also good for if you want to crop and macro a little bit, or to just give you a little bit more range um, on on what to do. Also, the dynamic range is very good at the moment and um, is uh, near to a 1DX Mark II, which is the, the best camera from, from Canon so far and with, a, with the highest dynamic range, so it's next to that. You have to keep in mind that you only have that on, on ISO 100, you have the best dynamic range and if you go, if you increase the, the ISO, then the um, dynamic range will go, also go lower and lower. It, Finally got a real good autofocus system, of course. Um, it's the same like, like the, the other models, or like the 1DX has as well with uh, 61 points and um, this is really good actually. Uh, so it's much better than the 5D Mark II. I can really feel that, that there has been a lot of steps improved by now. Um, next thing is really good is the autofocus in the video itself. This is really cool thing because the autofocus 
focus automatically detects um, uh, a subject which is near and which is far uh, very good automatically without any or something uh, um, without the autofocus turning too much yeah? so this is very smooth transition of, of autofocus I really do like that and you still got these you got a professional camera and a very small body um, or like a normal body for a DSLR but not like a big one like the 1D X series or so has yeah so I really it's, it's good in the hand and you can you can still do a lot of things and it's not too much camera actually yeah so um, in theory you can you could have if you don't see the 5D you could have like a only a 1100D or so like a small camera it's it's about the same yeah so not not exactly of course but about um, now what I don't like on this camera um, and I what and still again or again this is the, just my personal things what I find but for the video and um, this camera got uh, now 4k video recording in uh, 30 frames per second which is very good actually and uh, it also has um, up to 120 frames per second in full HD which I really really do like but and here's the big con um, if you want to shoot in 4k it automatically crops the full frame sensor to a crop of 1.74 um, nearly all DSLR cameras do that with a specific crop factor, but I find this is too extreme. Um, this would make you, uh, if you want to film wide angle underwater, um, this would make your 16mm lens a nearly 28mm lens. And if you ever shot uh, a standard lens like a 24 to 105, that's the standard kit for the 5Ds, um, then you pretty fast see that this is not working underwater because you need to go very close to the subject and this means if you want to have something on your picture, if you want to film a really nice wide angle landscape of a reef or so, you have to go close to get the colors and, and to be just be close and this is just not working with 28 millimeters. Um, you could of course use a fisheye uh, which you can also pull a little bit if you got the 8 to 15 millimeters you can go up to 10 millimeters without uh, cutting the edges but um, then you al always have the fisheye effect uh, in the in the in the pictures and you don't always want to have that I guess yeah um, there's also the 11 to 24 super wide angle lens uh, Canon I got that for some tests already underwater and above water this lens is really nuts yeah it's it's uh, really sharp really good um, but it's very expensive about 3000 euros and um, underwater I have to say I wasn't too uh, much satisfied with the quality of the edges um, uh, so uh, I wouldn't take that actually as my prime underwater or my favorite underwater lens so this is kind of a really downside for me who wants to shoot some video some 4k with that camera um, 1.74 is really difficult to handle as long in my I mean if you want to shoot just macro or if you are like a safari uh, guy who lose you who, who uses Taylor lenses a lot or so then it, that would be okay but I think for underwater it's difficult. Yeah. Next thing is the um, dual pixel. Uh, it talk, was talked about a lot in the uh, in the beginning that um, the with a dual pixel raw if you are if you change the settings to dual pixel raw you can choose out of three options that means um, shift the bokeh, um, shift the autofocus a bit and the third I always forget because it was so I don't know it wasn't interesting uh, for me at least so what was really interesting was to shift the um, focus a little bit because if you are in super macro mode for example underwater you and if you're photographing really small pygmy seal horses you're not always getting the the eyes sharp yeah that is really the hardest thing to get if you especially when you when you work in um, low aperture it's really hard to get just the eye in the focus and I have really I have hundreds of photos which are so nice or could have been so nice if the eye would have been in focus yeah so <laughs> I mean you probably all know the same um, problem yeah so just make some more photos and then it will be okay or just uh, 
be sure that the, uh, that the especially when when you shoot picnics and only have like a few frames what, what you can shoot just don't shoot too much just shoot when you're in when you think that the eye is really 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 sharp but this could have been really a good feature actually in the camera when you say okay I'm just one millimeter behind the eye or so yeah then you can shift it but unfortunately it doesn't work in macro um, that dual pixel um, focus shift raw thing because it only works for example in a um, with the 100 millimeter lens which is very really common on a 5d mark ii uh, or a full frame canon camera to use um, then it only works from distance from 2 to 20 meters um, and for 50 millimeter it would, would only work from 1 to 10 meters and 200 millimeters only from 4 to 40 meters so um, <laughs> you can see because all is very close to the to the camera actually um, all the macro subjects means like closer than 30 centimeters 50 centimeters to make it really big inside the camera then you can't use that feature and I tested it already on on my desk here uh, with uh, some models here and it just doesn't work yeah so this this feature unfortunately we can't use in macro photography which would have been really really nice yeah but mm, unfortunately not um, next thing what I disliked on this camera is um, I mean I was using the Canon 5D Mark II a lot in the last years of course and haven't been using the Mark III for example but that menu here is like five times as big as my menu in the 5D Mark II and I don't find anything in that <laughs> especially when you look for the video function uh, function so I skipped around that I think 10 times or so and I can't, couldn't find how you can switch the video quality and how to set up your video quality and, and settings and they even gave it to other people and said here look please find out where the video settings are and they don't find it because and um, or do uh, you can also do a little test pause the video if you if you have the mark for just check it if you find it or not the video settings and you um, if you don't use the touch screen behind yeah then it's very easy yeah, if you're in that mode and uh, um, use the touch screen but underwater you obviously you can't use the touch screen yeah so I wanted to change find out how to change it when I'm underwater um, the video settings and you just can't see it and the only thing you can pause the video now and check it by your own and then tell me if you found it or not yeah um, because I'm telling you now how to find it you always have to switch on to the live view mode and then go into the menu and then you can see the video settings I mean maybe I'm dumb or so or uh, I'm, I'm not logic or anything or I didn't have the latest cameras um, in the in the last years but <laughs> I find for a user um, this is actually not very uh, intuitive uh, to find out. Of course, I didn't have to look in the manual yeah, for that, yeah, but I don't want to look in the manual to find out to, uh, how to set my video settings up, actually. Yeah? This should be very intuitive, and I was, not, I was a little bit disappointed that this menu is so strange. Yeah? Even I have to admit that you, if you're really going to use that and camera a lot, and then you will find out which settings where are where, and you can customize it like you want, of course. But for the first go, it was like mm, I just don't find it. Yeah. <laughs> um, what else? Of course, um, if you want to use that high video speeds, um, then you need to also have a very fast. Uh, 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 card, um, CF card or SD card to save that data. You need to have a C fast card or something. Yeah, I didn't have a detailed look into that um, because I'm not too interested in this. I mean, if I need a fast card, then okay. Yeah, I'm. Uh, this is not a too big, big contra for me personally. But um, if you are thinking of to buy something, you probably can't use your old. Um, memory cards if you would on would like to re rely on them but you can ah, I have one more pro <laughs> uh, for the camera you can still use the old batteries which I found is very good yeah so I have plenty of batteries for my old 5d mark twos and you can just simply plug and play this is Canon very good you don't have to buy new batteries for that uh, if you don't want to um, I think that's it um, so far um, of course I wouldn't stick I or for the people people who are interested I will buy a new camera soon 
um, I won't rely only on my Canon 5D Mark II's. So and but what that camera is 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 not a secret. But um, I want to keep it a little bit low actually because I don't know yet exactly which model um, I will use. But I will tell you then on my YouTube channel or on Facebook. Yeah, so you're welcome to join and like me there as well. Okay, so um, I hope you liked that video and you have a little bit uh, more a guess now what uh, 5D Mark IV is. And yeah, then see you next time and uh, thank you very much. So, uh, now it's better. <laughs> so, uh, sorry, I had to make a little cut because the battery was empty of my 5D. I thought I still made it, will make it with 15% battery charge, but no. <laughs> I will go um, step by step to the points and <laughs> there's actually uh, oh, one of our dogs walking here. So hmm, now it's laying down. Okay. Yes, yeah. It's a little... Mm. My name is Tobias Friedrich and... Mm. Um, yeah, next... Ne uh, um, hello and welcome back to my channel. Um, mm.